Welcome to Subaru ECU Flash Training Part 22. In this training tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at a spark tuning demonstration. We're going to have an actual Subaru WRX we're going to be using for our training example here. We're going to be starting off with extremely low spark timing and then advancing the spark timing. We're going to be taking a look at what the data log within ROM Raider and then how to analyze the data in our Megalog Viewer HD software so we can break down the spark timing calibration process from start to finish and know exactly what to look for so you can replicate this on your own vehicle. Without further wait, let's jump in so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're gonna be taking a look at doing spark tuning process on a Subaru application in our last training tutorial. We did an overview of the spark timing and knock control on our EJ20 Subaru 16-bit applications. Um, we went through a standardized Subaru ROM and a Carberry ROM and how they differed in terms of how the spark timings deliver and the knock control integration. This training tutorial, we're gonna be taking a look at the actual process. So we're gonna start off with a conservative spark timing map. We're gonna be going and flashing it to the ECU learning what to data log within ROM Raider, and then opening up the data within our Megalog Viewer HD software so we can analyze what's going on from start to finish, and knowing then what changes to make into the spark timing table so that we can keep that process going and optimize our spark timing for the given boost level that we're gonna be at. Now this particular file that we're working with is the same Carberry speed density ROM that we were working with doing the speed density tuning for the open and closed loop tuning methods uh, in a previous training tutorial. So we essentially dialed in the fuel already, now we're moving on to the spark timing, and that's always the order of operations you want to work in. We need to do the fuel tuning first, then we need to do the spark timing, and then we can take a look at the boost control. That's going to be the, uh, the, the optimization, or the best way to, to do optimization safely, making sure that you have all of your bases covered, but you need to work in this very specific order as what we're finding here. Now, what I want to do here, to, just to start this video off, is just illustrate the key differences between a stock Subaru-based ROM in terms of the spark timing and uh, how the knock control is going to work, and then the Carberry, because they're going to be differing, and if you're not going to run a Carberry ROM, it's good and important to understand what is going on with the spark timing and the knock control in either situation, and then we'll take a look at the, the logging and the demonstration here of actually working with this particular vehicle in a Carberry-based ROM. Now, whether you're working with a speed density Carberry ROM or a load-based Carberry ROM doing mass airflow style tuning, the concept here is going to be the same. The real key differences in terms of working with a Carberry ROMs is going to be either your spark timing tables are going to be grams per rev, which is a load indication from your mass airflow sensor, or it's going to be in manifold pressure and PSI absolute, uh, which we can data log. It's going to be coming off our map sensor. Now, doing a speed density style tune in the Carberry ROM is a bit more straightforward to calibrate and tune because we don't have that grams per rev load registration that can be skewed if we're trying to dial in our MAF curve that can shift up or down our spark timing. Our MAP sensor is gonna be registering the MAP pressure regardless of whatever you're going to be at in terms of editing your volumetric efficiency table or your mass airflow curve if you're running a speed density based file that's gonna be MAP pressure based for the load input uh, in, in terms of the spark timing. So it's gonna be simplifying things and just making it a little bit easier. So um, let's go in here. And let's take a look now at our key differences. Let's just, let's just go back and forth real quick. And then again, we're just gonna move on and just take a look at where we're at here in this particular file, how I have it prepped, just so you are able to, to replicate, on that, replicate that on your vehicle, and then move into actually doing the process from start to finish. All right, so this is a 2003 Subaru WRX example file that we have right from our course packet. And then this is gonna be the Carberry calibration ROM um, from the last few videos that we've been working with. So in our stock Subaru ROM, we can find here, and we're taking a look specifically now at just spark timing. What we're gonna find here is that under ignition timing advance, we have a base timing table. The base timing table has relatively reasonable values in here to kind of get started with. Notice our units in a stock file here, and our load is grams per rev, which is a function of what the mass airflow sensor is going to be registering. Um, so that's gonna be changing the load input to the table. 1.0 load in a factory Subaru ROM, uh, or even in a Carberry ROM if we're using it in grams per red for the engine load, should be the equivalent if everything is scaled properly to approximately zero PSI. This is going to be representing, so below 1.0, this will represent vacuum, this will represent positive manifold pressure. We'll find that this is the base spark timing value, but we're gonna find that we have the ability to add on to this, we can find we have a parameter here called knock correction advance max. 
This is gonna be tied into the IAM, or Ignition Advance Multiplier. We'll find that these two values here are cumulative together, so meaning at a given load point and a given RPM point, whatever the timing value here is in the table, it'll add to whatever the value is right here. This is the most timing that it can run. If the Ignition Advance Multiplier is a value of 16, that means that we have low knock or no knock conditions. So our fine knock learn and our learn knock correction um, are going to be essentially having minimal activity and we're gonna find that we have no reported knock count. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you wanna see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you wanna go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here and you don't wanna miss any of the videos are gonna be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.